Hello friends and welcome back to the last major episode of the Falling Back to Basics series. My name is Caitlin from GreatFlorals.com and today we're going to be talking about sort of how to go from picking out photos to picking out your papers. Now I know there's a lot of people that struggle with different parts of layouts but I thought since this is a basics series of sorts we would go through how I would pick this is just my method, sort of my ideas for, I just moved my whole table there, sorry about that, taking photos and finding papers for them. Now these are photos that I set aside from another album. So these photos were from a series of photos that I had printed for a six by eight album that has since been finished. And these photos didn't really fit in that album um, because I used one of them, it's from the same series, but I didn't need three four by six of this instance of me twirling in my dress in Vermont. So I wanted to do a separate layout using these photos, talking about how I was at the time, you know, who I was when I was younger, um, and how sunburnt I got this day. <laughs> so I have four paper pads here that I just randomly pulled out. I don't have papers pulled out from these already, so we're going to go through this together. And I think for the last couple of process videos for the Falling Back to Basics series, what I'll do is I'll pull out the photos like I'm doing today, show you guys sort of me auditioning the color schemes that I'm going to go towards, and then I'll show you the final product at the end so we don't sit through the whole thing because I don't want to be talking for like two or three hours um, for each of those videos. So it'll be like a beginning process video. You missed the actual process of making the layout and then a layout share explaining how I did it. Um, sort of an expedited way to do a layout. But these photos, um, they're not crazy colored photos. They're more of a neutral. They're a bright blue. Um, they have this like nice green wrought iron fence. They have the white in the sky. I'm wearing a neutral outfit. It looks gray-ish black. It's actually a lighter gray than it appears. And then there's me. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to go through some of these paper pads and see how I could pull a color scheme together that could work for these. Now, if you guys know, I work with paper pads a lot because I think they provide great value. Um, so I don't have things that coordinate directly with these paper pads, but you can do the same sort of thing with collection kits or if you have kits from kit clubs, just pull a couple out and start auditioning them and you'll find one that you like the color scheme best. Now, if you're someone who struggles with making decisions when you have too many options, I would just pick two. Um, four might be a little bit too much for you to take on if you're trying to expedite your process. For me, I would end up just looking at these photos and picking out one paper pad and seeing if there's anything in there and then I'd put it back and grab another one if I wasn't happy. So we'll start off with this one, the Feeling Naughty Paper Pad by Craftsmith. This one I haven't used a lot. Um, as you can tell from the front, it's got this beachy theme to it and we're in front of the water here. So works really well for mood and feel, but there's basic papers in here like stripes, scallops, I guess you could say. Um, so let's open this up and start flipping through. I could definitely do a pink and blue sort of navy color scheme. I've been loving that lately and definitely drawn to it, but um, the way the way this would work in my book is I see a color, I like the color, what colors would go with that? I could even bring in this minty green color from the wrought iron fence, work with that. It could just be pink and white so the blue really pops, um, but I could also just pair this with something else. Like something like this, um, I think the colors work fine, it's just a little bit too busy for me to pull out. It could be just a layer under the photos. We could go blues. That would be a nice easy color scheme. These purpley blues don't really go well with the photo because these are more of, you know, not purpley blues. They're just straight sky blue. Again, the pinks and reds. Red seems a little harsh next to the blue compared to the pink, but that's just a personal preference of mine. Cut up parts, we're just going to ignore those for the sake of this video. Again, this baby, actually this is not baby pink. This is like a medium pink. Um, I think this works really well. Um, again, both these photos are very similar. They're just from the same set. So we don't have to compare two photos in this instance, but if we were, this one could work really well. Um, I kind of like that it's nautical, but I also don't like that it's nautical. Sometimes when I see nature photos, and I would consider this a nature photo out on the water, in the forest, those types of photos automatically think of nature colors, so blues and greens. Um, blue sky here. Do these blues go well together? I guess so. Um, I don't like these two directly next to each other, but that doesn't mean this color can't be part of my color scheme. So this is sort of the blue I would pull in if I was going to go with this pink. And again, this is that purpley blue, but we can make it work. Gold goes with everything. We're going to ignore metallics for this example. Again, I think the cotton candy colors work really, really well. The pink and blue pop off each other 
but again, it does remind me of cotton candy, so now I'm kind of hesitating to go for that color scheme. But if since this is nautical, we could bring in like a navy or something like that. So that's pretty much the color scheme of this paper pad. Um, we also have the greens in here, and I think green and blue go great together almost every time, especially the sea foam since it's kind of in the wrought iron fences here. Um, it's a really good match. I could definitely use this. This one's a little bit crazy, but since we have such a neutral photo, you could definitely pull in a crazier pattern paper. You just need to put something next to your photo to give it a little bit more breathing room. So maybe just a white mat under both of the photos. And sorry they're sideways, I just can't put the paper pad that way because it'll block a lot of the light. But if you put a white border around these and then a nice basic title, you wouldn't need too much embellishing, but this could definitely work. You got the pastels, you have the sea foam green, the baby pink. The red, again, not my favorite. It's a little bit bold on this, but totally works with our neutral photos. Again, we're ignoring metallics. We can make those work in any color scheme. Uh, pre-printed pages. Uh, I have a lot of trouble using pre-printed pages, and I know a lot of you guys do too. Um, I've actually been doing some great videos over for my patrons on Patreon using pre-printed pages. Now, um, if I wanted to tell a story more about like how I wanted to be a mermaid when I was a kid, great paper for that. Not a great paper for this particular set, but the color scheme would have worked fine. I'm just not into the mermaids at the moment. Um, these are some of my scraps. This is like more of a title page. Uh, we don't need that. This one, again, I think blues work together very, very well. I don't think the photos pop off of this page, despite it being very white, um, but it still works out pretty well. The pinks again. I'm in love with the pinks and the blues right now. That's just one of my favorite things to experiment with. So this is a blue with a gold metallic. Could definitely work again. Um, this is a very similar color scheme of the rest of the pattern paper pads, so you get the same idea. I've used this um, paper before, which is really, really fun, um, but it is very busy. And then again, this, we saw this earlier with the scallops. Love the green that matches the wrought iron in this fence. But this almost seems like an easy pick uh, if you're a very, very heavily mood and field person on your layouts. Definitely go for nautical, definitely go for outdoor or vacation for these types of photos that are on your vacation. But we're gonna hop into the next one. I think there's a lot of potential with this one. Um, now you might not think vacation photos with a travel paper pad, but let me tell you, that's where they go. <laughs> Um, I thought this one was fun because it's a retro color scheme and these are, you know, recent photos. It's not like a nostalgic memory. It's not, um, it's not bright and colorful other than blue and it does have a similar blue in here that sort of matches, but there's a lot of oranges and greens and this odd gray tone, which might match my dress. We'll have to see, but I figured blue and orange is another color combo that I used to do a lot. Um, the schools that I uh, went to and supported um, were orange, um, so I worked with orange and black a lot and orange and blue a lot, but tell me the blue does not absolutely pop off that orange. Um, they are opposite colors, if you guys didn't know, red and green, orange and blue, opposites, um, and then yellow and purple. This one, this one worked great. Again, green and blue always look great together. I don't know why, but again, not every shade of green and blue belong together. These ones really well could go with the photo. This one, again, if we're going for a retro vibe, I think the blue really pops off this reddish orange color. That might be a personal preference for me. Um, and I'm not necessarily auditioning them for background papers, just papers that'll be near the photos in general, whether that be photo layers or the background paper itself. If you guys know me, I love to use pattern paper backgrounds. Um, I can't remember the last time I used a white or a plain cardstock background um, unless it was in a pre-printed package like this. These kind of pages are a little bit too busy for my liking. I don't think this whole color scheme goes well. I would pick apart a couple of these pieces. That cotton candy pink still in there, so maybe I bring that in with the blue. Maybe I bring that in with the orange. But I think the green in the background too. Um, there's just too many shades in here for me to make that work. This one again pink and a little bit of orange in there. I think the photos make a really popping, they just really pop off, guys. That blue and orange combo. Opposites can attract. We have the maps of America and the world, which we will not be using. This one's sort of a blue, green, and purple, and this gives me like battleship vibes. <laughs> so it could be nautical. 
Um, I don't think that I would go for this pick. I think this is more of a one photo layout type of thing or smaller type, smaller photos, maybe some three by fours. Um, cause I'd really want to play off that curve and by using two four by six, I'd just be cutting that off, but this could definitely work as a layer. Um, the stripes don't really do much. I guess I wouldn't even call them stripes. The concentric circles don't really do much in terms of being a layer. You can see here, they'd kind of be cut off. So you'd get some stripes as if it were a diagonal and then they just kind of peter off there, but something you could definitely use. I think for this paper pad, I'm leaning towards the orange colors. Um, I think I would do orange and blue as a whole color scheme within itself. This paper would be perfect for that. Tell me it doesn't pop. These photos pop on this. I wish I did edit these photos a little bit so my dress wasn't so dark. Um, obviously there's a shadow cast behind me so that's why they do look so dark, but I really love the bright blue sky with these little pops of blue in there really help, you know, coincide the other blues. This one's more of a yellow orange, but you can still see they just pop. So really we're just talking about colors in today's video. Um, but we did do a video all about mixing and matching pattern paper, so you guys can check that out. I'll have the Falling Back to Basics series listed down below, whole playlist for you guys, so you guys don't have to go through all of these struggles alone. I promise all of us do struggle with these things. Um, sometimes it's just picking which pattern papers, the, which pretties you want to work with during that day, or if it's which store you want to tell, or you can't get the cluster to look right. You got one to look right, the other one doesn't. I struggle with those too. And um, for example, this rainbow paper, I don't know if I'll ever be able to use this. Um, it could totally work. There's no reason it can't, it looks fine. I just struggle with a lot of color in one spot. Here's that funky gray. Let me know what you guys think this color is. It almost looks like a gray purple um, here could definitely work as well. I think it provides enough contrast against the blues that it could work. Maybe I should center a little bit more as I cause an avalanche of stickers. Um, center this a bit more. Um, so those could work. This one's a little crazy. You got green, orange, and that funky gray. Do I think they pop? Mm, not really. Um, could I make this work as a layer? Yes, 100%. I think these colors go very well together. Again, blue and green, really well. Orange and blue, really well. I think the green and orange are almost fighting on this paper, so it's kind of distracting from the photos themselves. This one's really, really fun. We've got the pink, we've got the orange, we've got our blue, and we've got our green. That's like all the colors I asked for. I would use this in a heartbeat um, as my color scheme. Not necessarily this radial design. Again, I like to use these radials. Um, for very targeted layouts. So this would be a one photo in the middle or it'd be a couple, you know, like a film strip, you know, not taking away from this radial aspect. When I do this, there's a center here, but it's not, you're not meeting there. You're going past it to view everything. So that's my view on some radial designs. We've got a little globe pattern here. Again, we're seeing the repetition in color now. Um, a lot of paper pads are like that. But you can see here, this one work as well. Um, this one has more focus on that gray blue which I think doesn't make the photos pop as much but we do have these pops of orange which seem to be the highlight of this background paper. Some planes. I wouldn't use a plain paper but if we treat this as just a diagonal design. I like the pink still. I like the pops of orange. Pink and orange and blue might be the color scheme I'm kind of going for um, and this is a great way to narrow down your style as well. Um, if you take a neutral photo um, these aren't as neutrals. Maybe take a black and white photo and see which papers you're naturally drawn to to scrapbook that. Um, that might help you dictate which your favorite scrapbooking colors might be or what patterns you usually reach for. Again, this grayish blue doesn't make the photos pop nearly as much as some of the other options we saw, even in the other one. Um, so I wouldn't use that as a main photo layer. But maybe as a sub... We've seen this one before. Okay, they're repeating. So, really love this paper pad. If you guys have not seen it yet, I found it at Tuesday morning a while back. $3.99 for 48 sheets of paper. That was a great deal. Most of the time, there are, I think, five at Tuesday morning now. Maybe six, depending on. So then we have two more. Again, sorry there's so many Craftsmith. The last one was, again, was We Are Memory Keepers. But Craftsmith is the ones that they sell at Michael's. 
They are occasionally available on Amazon, and I will try to find these on Amazon and link them down below in case you guys are interested in them. But these were the, this was the first one I pulled out when I first saw these photos. I was like, oh, if I do a story that's about like me being wild and free, butterflies, great. Then I was thinking, well, it's nautical, so why don't I pull out the sea glass? You know, it's got these beautiful florals. If you guys don't know, my blog name is grayflorals.com. This is a floral with a gray background. It speaks to me on so many levels, um, but it was really hard. So these were some of the two that I first picked out. Then I kept flipping and found those other two great, amazing options. And as you guys can tell, depending on your style, depending on your photos, depending on what you own, you might find that you have more or less options that you care for or don't care for. And if you're finding that the more papers you look through, the more you're being frustrated, um, it's probably because you already found something that would work and you're just trying to find the, I don't know what you'd call it, the unicorn, the perfect piece. Um, and sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes you have to make it work and at the end you'll love the results. Sometimes at the end you'll hate the results. Um, but I think it's important to focus on the stories. So although we're looking at colors here, it's also good to keep in mind what story you're going to tell. Like I said, butterflies, if I was talking about my wild and free um, this on this vacation. It was one of the last vacations we ever took as a family. Um, so I think that's fun to touch on and kind of pull from. And I also like how innocent these papers are. Um, particularly these florals look particularly innocent. Um, whereas these florals are a little bit more grown up um, where I am now. Although this was only three years ago. Um, it's still good to think about those things when you're making your layouts. And I know Janet at RTS Scrapbooking has tons of mood and feel tips and tricks. So I highly recommend you guys check her out. Um, Nicole Jones does that really well as well. I know I mention them all the time, but they're just people I watch all the time. Um, as long with Becky Bidding, um, she's crafty. Check out all their channels. I adore all of these people. They make such great videos and they really deserve your views. Um, just as much as you think I deserve them, they do too. So let's start with the sea glass collection because this was not the first one I picked out. This was the first one. And again, I didn't go through these before I started this video. We're going through them together. And these ones in particular, I know what the collection looks like a bit. So it makes sense for me to want to pull certain things out for certain themes because I don't have to flip through them every time to figure out what those themes might be. So the sea glass collection. Lots of scraps in it. I've used it quite a bit. But um, what I really like about this collection is it's nautical, or I guess you wouldn't want to say nautical. It's water themed without being super beachy. Um, but it's also got those beachy elements, you'll see. This one I think works really well because it has that darkness to it that also transfers into this ombre. And I would use it this way. <laughs> but again, for space sake, I have to turn my paper pad sideways. I really like how it goes from dark to light and pulls in this color again from the posts that are in the photo. This one's falling apart. I'm so sad the paper pad's falling apart, but this one, um, a gray blue, really pretty, just not, it doesn't let the photos pop, which I think is the problem with some of my mood and feel papers is that a lot of beach themed or nautical themed papers involve blues and a lot of the photos do too. So that's interesting to note. I really love the cream with these. I think it makes the clouds pop as well. Um, I don't know why these limes are this odd shade of green. I don't know when I'm ever going to use this paper, but I adore it. I think it is absolutely beautiful. This is like a wallpaper I'd put in my kitchen when I have my own kitchen someday. I adore this paper. I love the color scheme so much, but I don't think it really fits with these particular photos, mainly because of the limes. If there weren't limes in this and it was just the floral, I'd consider it. And I'm going to be skipping some because these this paper pad has doubles um, right next to each other. This is what I was talking about. If you look at these florals, um, they're more of a grown-up floral, as I will call it. Um, and I think these colors work beautifully. Um, I definitely think this floral design still described me at the time, but I do like the innocence of the other paper pad as well. Color scheme-wise, again, you have these minty blues that really pull in from these posts. Um, the colors between these posts, even though they're the same exact ones, differ between each photo. So they're a lot brighter here than they are in this one, which again, important to note. I like that the cream brings out the cloud color without having to do too much work. Um, I just really like it. I also think my hair tone color, which is another thing to consider if you want to be, you know, really dive into deep why you're picking certain things, really goes well with these neutrals because it's a nice... Um, in the sun, it's more of a golden brown. Um, I have no idea what my hair color is, but... I think it goes well with these neutrals. 
we're gonna skip these fancy ones. Okay, so the same floral, but on a dark background. Now this background matches my dress perfectly. Um, I think it actually weighs it down in a bad way. It doesn't make the dress pop in any sort of way. Um, unlike the other papers that make the sky pop, I thought this kind of would make my dress pop because again, same exact gray tone. And while it does match and the blue still pops off the gray, it still doesn't give me the same vibe as the last one. So we'll flip between them. Okay, so there's that one. Oh, I forgot there was one in between. Here's this one. Let me know if you guys prefer lighter or darker backgrounds on these particular photos. I would just love to know a little poll because I want you guys to see that everyone has different tastes and everyone has different opinions. I honestly don't know which one I'd pick. Maybe it's one of those ones where you cut the paper in half because it's the exact same pattern and then line them up. I've seen those done really well before. I'm almost going for the dark gray, but if you guys know me, I love all grays, so this is a very hard decision. I don't know guys, they're just so pretty. That's why I haven't used these yet. I think they're beyond pretty. Okay, so this is the one that I've already used. Um, a pre-printed one with that weird side piece. I'd probably stack them the other way. Um, that's how I used it last time, I believe. I really like the boardwalk or wood grain in the background. I think that adds a lot because I know the um, boardwalk we were walking on was like fresh wood. Um, so despite this being a gray color, I think it still works well. Uh, but it's a little bit bland. I'd have to add a lot more layers under my photos to make it, to make my photos pop because right now they're just on a light gray background. You guys can also tell that the blues in these photos are actually quite a bit different, um, especially on these two sides. So this one's very dark and this one's pretty light. So, although let's see, if we line them up this way, they're a little bit better. Just things to keep in mind when you're scrapbooking and stacking. We have a stripe. Um, I, oh, we missed one. We have this wood grain, a nice deep teal wood grain that matches that post. Now, if you ask me, the posts jump out now more than I do on this page. Um, again, I know the coloring will be a little bit different on camera and we do have a little bit of glare, but I hope you guys can see that. I'll just do it up close really quick so you guys can see. The teal on that post is beautiful. And why is it not in focus? It has a really hard time with glossy pictures. Okay, there we go. You see that teal on that post? Really pretty. Um, it matches this perfectly. I think this would be a great layer, but not a great background. Only because it doesn't put the emphasis on the subject of the photo, aka myself. This one has a similar tone to the post, a little bit lighter. Um, I really like this one. I think it still has the pop factor because of this brighter blue that really offsets the sky blue, if you will. I know there's a lot of blues. Guys, almost all my paper pads have blues. Um, even though this is a really busy pattern paper, um, because it has those creams and they're sort of watercolored in the little bit of color that is there, I think it still works really well. Um, I think it's a little bit too busy to use as a full 12 by 12 for the embellishing I'd want to do on this layout, but really pretty. Um, could end up working as a layer. Oh, I'll have to put those in the scrap section after. Um, this is that gray again that matches my dress more than it matches anything else in the photo. Um, definitely could use this. I would just put a lot of those other papers that I mentioned that make the photos pop around the photos themselves. So this would be a great neutral background if I wanted to do a lot of layering underneath my photos. Hope you guys aren't sick of these same pictures. At least they don't have my actual face in them. This one, a nice light teal cross pattern. One of my favorites from the collection. I actually have the washi tape that matches this paper pad, so I absolutely adore it, and I'm just trying not to use it all too fast. Um, but I really, really like this one as well. Again, I'd add some of those papers that really helped me pop in the images, help the sky pop, because um, theoretically, if the sky pops, then the outline of myself pops. So making those work would do um, a lot of paper layers, and that would, you know, make it do. A lot of words, too busy for my liking, but could it work as a layer? Yes, it could. I think it'd be a waste as a layer. This almost seems like something I should cut up instead to use as ephemera. A uh, pre-printed paper. Again, it's just essentially a cream background, but this teal helps balance the layout out because we have a lot of blue here, and then we have a gray blue here. Could really work well. Another beautiful ombre. This one's similar to the last one we saw. 
I like the darkness, but again, the pulls just really pop out compared to me. Not that this wouldn't work, it's just, in my opinion, that's how it would work. Um, in my eyes, uh, at the end, I think it doesn't, <laughs> they just stick out so much to me now. And it's not just because they're on the paper, it's because that's, that's the brightest thing in the photo, um, compared to my dress right next to it. Okay, it looks like this is the last one, another gray-blue. Again, I really enjoy this color, um, and it does speak to the posts, but it's not the exact color, so it still combats them as a background instead of a prime subject. So I like this one. Again, I'd have to add layers to make the photos pop because I don't think they really pop off of this gray-blue, but I think they still look really nice. Now, I will say that we're going away from the blues in the next one, but there's still blues in it, so I apologize. Um, if you wanted to see purples and stuff, I don't think I own much purple paper. Um, if you wanted to see other colors, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm a blue and green girl through and through, but we do have some pinks in here, and I do enjoy pink every now and then. So let's get past the cut aparts here, and we'll begin with this. Now, if you ask me, these are those innocent florals I was talking about. These look like ones that'll be on wallpaper in a little girl's room or an emblem that'll be on her toy chest, something like that. But that's just me. These could be old lady flowers to you. That's fine too. I like that they're doodly and that there's butterflies, you know, that kind of thing. I love how the navy helps emphasize me because my dress is so dark because I like that it's a different color. This actually might not be a navy. Sometimes I have a hard time telling navy from black when there's no other page in the paper that's this color to compare it to. Um, so I really like this one. Again, it's a very busy paper, so we'd want something around the photos. Maybe one of those pinks I saw earlier that matched would go around well, give it some breathing room. But I do like these. It's kind of weird to see florals and butterflies next to water photos, I will say. That seems a little bit off in my book, but it depends what the story's about, too. Which, of course, I mentioned earlier. Maybe we could incorporate just this butterfly paper, say, on a uh, nautical paper just to give it that little hint of mood and feel without having to be up in your face like the last one was. Again, I really like this navyish color. I think it works well with the dark grays in here, and we also have the laps in the lake there, so you get a little bit of that dark, dark, deep blue that you get from depths of water. So I could use that one. More cut aparts we're going to avoid. This one could work really well too. Um, I wouldn't use it on this diagonal, I don't think. One thing I was thinking about when I started this is there's a lot of lines going on within my photos. We have the horizon line, which matches my arm line, and then we also have the lines from the railing itself. So bringing in a diagonal like this seems a little bit confusing to me. Um, unless I can see the full picture, I don't think I'd naturally gravitate towards this. But I really adore this gray-blue. Again, I think it goes really well with the dress and it goes well with the posts. I just really like it overall. So that one might might have been a choice, um, but again, I find it a little bit confusing when so many lines are in a photo. Here we have an ombre. Uh, this one's a little less harsh than some of the other ones. The other ones were very dark to very light, and this one's light to like a medium, which I really enjoy, but it doesn't feel right. This gray side over here feels really heavy versus this light, I guess I'd call this minty teal again. Um, so I don't think I'd be naturally drawn to this one. I think it's fighting a little bit too much for these photos to really pop on it. Although the color does look really nice on them. I think that's just the nature of the photos themselves. Here's another one of those dainty, innocent florals that I was talking about. I think the pinks and greens could go really well with the blue. Um, as you can see here, there's a couple little flowers here that are that gray blue, so it's not like we're losing blue altogether. It's just becoming a secondary or third color in our color scheme, just like this yellow would be. Um, but since there's also, actually, there are some purples on here as well. I could see this working. Um, I'd have to get some more pink. I think it'd just be a pink sort of, pink and green color scheme, but I like the cream next to the blue, as you guys know, from the other different paper pads we went through, so I'm still not sure, guys. If you guys think, uh, comment down below with which one you think I'm going to pick. Um, and I'm not saying it's from this paper pad either. You could just pick the, if you want to guess which paper pad I'm going to pick for this, or if you want to guess which actual paper I'm going to end up picking. And it doesn't have to be the background, it could be any of them. Um, any of the layers I might pick. And I might mix up the collections, I have no idea guys, I promise I haven't planned this out. 
Um, so then we have this one, again, the diagonal, not really feeling it, but love this gray tone. I think it matches the pictures beautifully. It's hard to find grays that match. Let me just say that. So lover of gray, it's very hard. Um, this one's a little bit too dark. Again, I would need a lot of other layers here to combine with this so it doesn't feel so heavy because right now it just feels like my dress is like a rock and weighing me down on this paper. Um, another little, I would consider this a dainty innocent floral as well. I like this one because it provides a ton of contrast, but it's also very neutral. So I feel like the photos just pop because it's the only color on the page. And if you guys know me, I do love a good monochromatic layout, but if there's an option to use other things, I usually do. So I'd probably introduce blues and greens into this one. I don't think I'd jump ship and go pink for this one. Now, if we, dis if we just ignore the mood and feel of this picture and just think about me spinning in a field, I think the butterflies would look great. Um, I think that since it's got this watery theme to it, I'm not really drawn to the butterflies as much as I thought I would be, um, especially given the story. Um, but I think that water also has an element to it that provides that the same sort of lines of the story that I want to tell. And again, I don't know the exact story. I just want to talk about me as a person at this time versus the actual vacation. So if you find yourself having photos like that where you want to tell the story of the subject, not necessarily the subject in its environment, That'd be a great way to do it is to focus on mood and feel for your background papers and your elements. Now, no one says I can't cut out one of these butterflies, these blue ones, and put it on a nautical page. No one's saying that. You can do that too. Um, but sometimes we let the environment choose our story when we should be looking at the subjects of the photo. But there's so many stories to tell, so I don't blame you. So technically, I've scrapbooked this already in the vacation one, right? So we don't need to think about mood and feel. If this was a singular photo layout, um, I'd probably actually have a vertical photo in this sort of instance, but it could definitely work. I wouldn't I wouldn't do it for this one though. I think it's it's deserving of a photo that's really iconic and you know center of attention like 21st birthday or the cat you just adopted or your child at graduation. You know, something really cute. Mother's Day would be great for this page. Another pre-printed that I'd probably wouldn't put this photo on, probably a vertical photo maybe around the same time, some sort of innocent photo of me outside or something would work really well. Again, I think these are very innocent florals. They remind me of Alice in Wonderland. She was very innocent and naive in that film. And that's kind of what this gives me, those kind of vibes, which doesn't mean I'm right either. So take it with a grain of salt for your own good too, with all the things you want. So this is actually, I believe on the cover of this, this is the one that I originally saw and thought that could work really well for the story that I wanted to tell. Because orange and blue is, again, a color scheme I get drawn towards very easily. I've worked with it before. It might scare others because, again, they're contrasting. It's going to be a lot to sort of try to balance. Uh, but I think it looks really, really pretty with the blue. Um, I would add more blue elements, of course. I wouldn't just let the orange be the only thing. I'd add some more blue elements and build out the clusters and stuff. But I really like this one, too. I think it's going to be a combination of some of these orange patterns we've seen today. But guys, I really like the butterflies. They're so, so pretty. But I also really like the water theme that I have on the other ones. These I don't necessarily look for uh, using. I don't, I don't think I'll use these. Um, let me know if you guys have ever used these. I think they might work well with like a school photo, you know, those really small ones. But I haven't thought about a way to use those. Another neutral, this could work well if I want to do a bunch of those different layering pieces. This would be a great one to lighten up that navy one we saw earlier that was really heavy and dark, but they're both polka dots of the exact same size, so that's going to be tricky to work with too. But could definitely work. And that's the end of the paper pad. So I have a lot, a lot of different options just between these four paper pads. So we'll go back to the beginning where I said if you have trouble making a decision, like your process is very long, for your scrapbooking, stick to one or two paper pads. That way you have two different color schemes to pick from. Um, I went through four today just to give you guys some options and some insight of my process. Now, to be honest, usually I just pick a paper pad, whether I know it or not that it's gonna be the final one, go through it, pick out some papers and run with it. Um, I'm not someone who goes through all the papers to find something that'll really, really work um, or that I'm you know, looking for. I don't have an idea normally when I start. So, 
I have these two photos, I have a story in mind, and I need to scrapbook it. So let me know in the comments down below which papers you think I'm going to pick. Or which paper pad you might think I'll pick from. Because um, there's literally endless options here. I think there's 48 in each. And it's missing some, but guys, that's so many different options. If we just round up, that's 200 options. And then we can mix and match them. I'm not going to do that kind of math because I'm not a math student anymore. But I'm going to sit down and do a real-time process video for my patrons of these photos. But don't worry, I will be posting the final layout over on Instagram so you guys can see it. Um, I'm not sure when I'll be done with it. I'm not going to sit down and do it right now, actually, because my throat needs to rest after filming the last two videos I filmed. It's nonstop with these talking videos. But I hope you guys enjoyed the last real sit-down video um, or lesson of the Falling Back to Basics series. We have a couple more process videos, and then we'll do sort of a wrap up on the How to Kill a Kit with Style November Kill a Kit video and that'll be the wrap up of Falling Back to Basics and then stay tuned for the announcement video for our next section of series that will be coming to this channel. I hope you guys are enjoying the three month blocks that we've been doing. I think it's enough time to really dive into a topic and give you guys time to work on it so I can get feedback before the series ends. Um, I know you guys have been commenting on my community posts on the YouTube tab or my YouTube posts on my community tab on YouTube. Um, if you haven't checked those out, go vote in those polls that we have up right now. Um, I also get input from my patrons, so if you're interested in seeing what's coming up on the channel before it actually comes out, um, they actually know what the next series is too. Um, so you guys can head over there to learn more about what's coming up and um, I really appreciate your support here and you guys leave wonderful comments on my videos with more suggestions and more questions and it's really helpful to know what you guys want because I get to work on a multitude of things all the time so I really love to know what you guys want and December, January, and February is going to be really fun. Um, a lot more talking videos so don't worry about that. Those are going to continue and my poor throat. I'm hydrating as much as I can, don't worry. And I'm taking breaks. I know someone was talking about taking breaks as well and I do. Um, so I'm going to try to think about what to scrapbook these photos with. And then I'm going to do that real-time process video for my patrons. And I sincerely appreciate you guys again through the Falling Back to Basics series. A couple more process videos to go. But don't forget to leave me a comment down below with which paper pads or which papers you think I'm going to use. And then you'll have to check out my Instagram to see uh, which ones I end up using. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy. And leave a comment down below like I mentioned. And I will see you guys again soon. Bye!